Okay, so we're going to take a look at some examples involving uh, the e. We talked about before that the derivative of e to the x is itself, so we get e to the x as its derivative. But this time, we have e to negative x. So let's take a look at that one. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this. So y equals 1 over e to the x. We want to put this on the bottom, and so that way we have a positive exponent, plus we only know how to do the derivative of e to the x right now, so we want to create that. We can do that by putting that on the bottom. We have a fraction, so we're going to do this by the quotient rule. Okay, so the top one is f, the bottom one is g. When we find the derivative, we're going to use quotient rule. So the, the way the rule works, it's the bottom, e to the x, times the derivative of the top. Now, on the top, we have a 1. Derivative 1 would be 0. We have a minus, minus the top thing, 1. And then we're going to do derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom, the derivative of e to the x, is e to the x. So we have that right there. So again, we have the bottom. Derivative of the top is 0, minus the top, which is 1. Derivative of the bottom is itself. Derivative of the e to the x is e to the x. Over the bottom squared, so e to the x squared. We're going to simplify this. Okay, so on top, this part cancels out, so we don't have that. And then we have a minus e to the x. On the bottom, you have a power raised to another power, so you're... Uh, Rules of exponents tells us that's going to be 2x. And now, since we uh, have two things with the same base, the negative we can pull out front, so te technically we do have the same base here, to track the exponents, what will happen is you end up with an x in the bottom. So you'll get negative 1 on top, and then you'll get e to the x on the bottom. So this is going to be your final answer, or you can write it as negative e to the negative x, that would be another way of writing that as well. We're going to use what we just did in the last example in order to answer this one. We have another e to negative x. So we just did this earlier. I'm going to go ahead and write the result of that. If I have the derivative of e to negative x, we said that was negative e to the negative x. So I'm going to Leave that up there because we're going to use that again. That was a result of the last problem we did. So now, whenever you see e to the negative x and do the derivative, we can just go ahead and apply that formula for it, negative e to the negative x. So we're going to use that. For this problem, we want to find the derivative. What we're first going to do is we need to separate that. Now, we could do that by quotient rule, but this is one where we can make the problem a little bit easier by dividing each of those by 2. So in fact, what will happen is I get a 1 half e to the x minus a 1 half e to the negative x. Both of them, there's a 1 on top of, a, of both of those. We're splitting up the fraction, and you can split it up into that one. So now we can just take the derivative of each one separately, and we don't need to worry about using a quotient rule. Let's apply the derivative. When you apply derivative to this one, you're going to leave the 1 half down front. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x, the same, same thing. Over here, I have a minus 1 half, and then I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of e to the negative x, which we already did before in that previous example. So with that, we're going to put in this, negative e to negative x. Negative e to negative x. And now we're just going to simplify it. Your derivative is going to be 1 half e to the x minus minus is plus e to the negative x, and you can leave your answer like this, or again, this one you can write as 1 over e to the x if you want.